In part one of this video, Pete Ardema explained the development of his 93-year-old Model A Ford engine that obtained a top speed of 240 miles per hour and set a record on the books at Bonneville for 238 and a half miles per hour. So in segment two, we're going to disassemble the engine and we're going to show you all the internal components and how Pete and Kevin came up with this bizarre design to make this the fastest Model A on the planet. Are you cool, Pete, if we spend some time and tear this engine apart yeah. so we can show oh, great. We'll the take viewers? It with we'll that. Take it apart. I know a lot of folks really want to see some of the mechanical, um, you know, th these have been very popular among some of the viewers and they like the ingenuity and the design, but I think it would be neat to be able to show them. Yeah, we'll uh, do that. Done. Okay, that's great. So first off, I'm honored not only to have the opportunity to film this, but to actually help Pete disassemble this engine. And um, so you're going to see some of the valve train here, and we're going to put this on a time lapse. We're going to disassemble the engine, and then Pete and Kevin are going to talk about how they made some of these unique components, such as the cylinder heads, and how they had to modify this uh, engine to um, perform the way that it needed to do to set the record at 238 miles an hour. Do you want me to mark the latch caps in any way? Um, or little dots or something? If you okay. mark them on the top and put them in a box. Yeah. Let me get a little bit of you. We gotta pull that plug out. That's okay. because there's oil there. I think it's quarter 20. Okay. We gotta, we gotta pull that. Uh, there she goes. There she is. Wow. That's this is the inch we took up. I set it right here. We uh. Yeah, we, this is the inch that we stuck it back in the hole to basically shorten the deck height. So now instead of 11 inch deck, it's a 10 inch deck. So we were able to use our, our original rods, crank. Uh, we've got low compression pistons in there because we turbocharged it. And you can see the shelf where it seals, that's the head gasket. Yeah, that's, that's a basic copper ring. It's probably about 40 thick. And we bored it an eighth, eighth inch bigger, the top inch. This was like umpteen motors ago. This is, <laughs> this is our third and final version of the Malle block. And we, we did, the sole purpose for doing it was to shorten the deck height. Because I don't like long, tall decks. When you have when you're high, trying to turn high RPM, and you can see where you've pieced the two portions together, right? This, this the is the upper and the lower portion of the cylinder head. Yeah, this this is our latest one. Our first one we did like this. It was no, this is the first one. This is actually three pieces. Oh, I see. Yeah, there it is. We got the bottom piece, which is the combustion chamber. We got the middle piece, which is actually mainly water and then the top piece has the guides the valve guides in the top piece i think our the last one we did it was two pieces we were able to do it in two pieces and this was all done on the brick fort this was not done on a cnc so this is all manual mill work kevin did this right wow, that's great there's the indentation for the ford where the flathead was yeah you can see that and these all three valves appear to be the same size? No, I they, think the exhaust look? is just a touch bigger. Oh, okay. You get so much more area out of two rather than one. Look at the, look at the shape of that combustion chamber. That's neat. Yeah, and this is the head, head gasket surface right here. Yeah, so that's where the, the copper right. just rests right on that. And I, that's kind of neat how you have that little shelf in there for it to sit on. Yeah, well, that forms a head gasket. And then this is just glue. It's just your... Yeah, and the water... The water's got to be that... 
where you can kind of see, and the water doesn't pass through, so it's, each cylinder head has its own water source, so right. they share. This is, I believe this is oil. Now this is... Well, that's going directly in line to the... Uh, one is oil, one is water. And then this is water. I would say this is probably the oil, right? Because to get oil to the... Right, it looks oily. Yeah, and to the valve. So we pump water in the low side. The intake is on the top. So the high side is the water out. This is water in, this is water out. This is oil drain back. Probably through that hole, one of these holes. It's pretty interesting, Pete. That's a unique design. I don't think I've seen no, a No, I've never seen like anything this. like this. John Causey, who's well known for uh, FE Ford stuff, he yeah. won the Engine Master Contest a number of times. He's really sharp. Mm -hmm. uh, he did very similar to this, but I didn't understand exactly. Yeah. But he, he did the same thing on one of his engines. Where it went on, down into the... Ford. Now he did... I don't know exactly how it worked, but he did very similar. Uh, so you can see now this with the cylinder, one of the modules off, you can really see how, it, you know, for the folks that are very familiar with the Model A engine block, now it's... Yeah, we're going to take this off. That rail, but yeah, that looks like that comes off after the heads. Okay, so we've got the four cylinder, individual cylinder heads off. Now we can see the block. You can see the, the shelf, right? That's that one inch shelf you were talking about. These, these two pistons are top dead center. Down, they're down an inch. They're top dead center. These are bottom, down, bottom. Uh-huh. So this is, one's on compression, one's on exhaust. And uh, yeah, that's how all four cylinders work. This is a water jacket. This picks up the water out of the block, out of these ports, and takes it in this manifold, and we suck it out of these two things here. So that's how the water gets out of the block. The block is, the water in is here, uh -huh. and then this is the out. And then it comes through the, the, the water block. jacket, street, and then comes back out through this yeah, plate. Yeah, we've got a big electric water pump we made, Okay. so it pumps a lot of water. This this girdle, I'm going to take credit for this girdle, but this these two horseshoe clamps hold the block from breaking. Like I say, these things are like potato chips. They break looking at them. So we made these two horseshoes, and what's unique about this particular clamp, this is a 13 thread per inch. This is 20 thread per inch, and they're both right-hand thread. Uh -huh. So when you turn them, this goes in, for one revolution, this goes in one thirteenth of an inch. Uh-huh. This goes in one twentieth of an inch. So that difference... Creates a lot of pressure. Of seven, seven threads per inch. Uh-huh. So one revolution, the difference would be seven one hundredths of an inch, something like that. Uh-huh. i got to figure that out. I, yeah. But it's a very... One turn on this would barely shrink this hardly at all. Where a regular U-bolt would be left and right threads, yeah. it would, one turn, you couldn't, you no leverage. Make, yeah. You can get a lot of leverage with this, the way I made this. And there's two of them, so we can actually clamp the block from moving. From moving. So that just uh, we did this on the last, last two engines because they, they want to break. Uh, you can see the big gap here. This, that's only typical of... Uh, there's not much material there, but you guys bored that, right? Right. So. That's yeah, crazy. this thing probably made 300 natural, and possibly uh, to go 240, we'd probably have to make at least five natural, or with a blower. And it was boosted at that time. Yeah, it was boosted. We had the turbo on it. We had a blower on it originally, but it didn't. And these are the low compression pistons right now? Yeah, it's probably about an eight to one. Eight to one. And then with, I don't I don't remember how much boost we put on it. It's been a while. It's been eight years since we ran this. Yeah. And I see the large bolts where the valves used to be. Right. So this is 
holding up the girdle at the bottom? Right. Is right. that what that is? It goes all the way through, all right? Yeah, these bolts are the old push rod holes. I see that. And they go, they go into the mains. There's two additional mains here and here, plus the original main here. This was a three main block originally. Okay. And we put two additional mains in it. That's pretty, pretty bizarre, Pete. Thank but, you. But uh, you and Kevin dreamed this up and had such success with it. And how many times do you think this has run? And Oh, well, this uh, ran a number of times, probably 15, 20 times. Wow. Uh, um, and it was reliable after all your modifications, so you didn't... Well, to say a model is reliable is an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they still break. You have to almost tear them apart every... Every time? Yeah. So, I mean, it's quite an interesting teardown process. It's non-conventional. No, you can't do through. this in a... In the pits. I mean, we've been here an hour just to yeah. get the head off. Yeah. Now you got another couple of hours pulling the crank and all that stuff, and then making sure everything is, is uh, good, right? The, the little E motor, the 250 cubic inch, we ran it three years and never took it apart. Okay, just changed the oil and spark plugs. And it huh? makes, <laughs> it makes uh, over six with, yeah. with, nitro, with nitrous oxide and almost, what was it, 580 on gas, mm -hmm. natural. Um, yeah, that's pretty good for a 250 cubic inch. That's over two and a half per inch, two two and a quarter per inch. So we got all the parts laid out on the bench, and I'm gonna um, just show everyone the, all the components that you and Kevin had to make and design. It's pretty interesting. And did you have? I'm sure you guys had uh, Snyder do the cam. Yeah, we made the blanks. Made the blanks. And then he ground them for us. Uh, it's a direct acting. The cam sits directly on the valves, basically with a bucket in between. Yeah. So it's much like a flathead grind that they would have put on a flathead back in the 60s, 70s. Okay. Um, it's direct acting. So the grinds, there's a lot of grinds of the Ford flathead, which this is basically a yeah. flathead. Or was a flathead. Was a flathead. The, the grind was a flathead grind direct acting yeah all the european cars motorcycles all of them use that method of that bucket level. on top of spring yeah you see this on the european cars yeah i know no, toyota does now too and a lot of the imports a lot of them are using finger followers you can get a little more lift with the ratio in the in the finger followers so i know push rods are against your better judgment and why is it that do you think that manufacturers to this day still well, it's so cheap. You can make one cam. Yeah. You got a set of push rods, which probably cost them five bucks. And so you got a set of lifters. And they've been doing it for 50, 60 years now. And it does work. Thanks mm -hmm. to NASCAR. Uh, they were able to. They've, they've got, and Jessel. Jessel and NASCAR have done more for valve train than anybody. Yeah. And the new LS engine, just superior to, you know. Uh, but the new Corvette, four valve, mm -hmm. is uh, finger follower. Yeah. Four valve. Uh, if you're going to make horsepower, you need four valves. Uh, that's one of the reasons we're so, so successful is we're running a four valve against all these two valve push yeah. rods. We're making two and a half per cubic inch with our V12. Mm -hmm. We're probably making close to one and a half natural with this thing. Probably a little better. Yeah. Almost two natural. Well, it's 200 inches. Yeah, we're making close to two per inch. Two horsepower per cubic inch. With a Mollet. Yeah. natural that's hard to do um, and next Scott, up kevin's going to disassemble this cylinder head this is pretty cool it's put together in layers you'll get to see how kevin designed this and he's going to walk us through and explain the process and i must say this is a unique cylinder head unlike anything i've ever seen now we decided to go with a three valve um, intake is usually the problem with getting enough airflow and we seem to do be okay with a single exhaust. We later found out that we liked the dual exhaust better, but this was worked out well. Um, we went with a 10 millimeter um, spark plug so that we could get the biggest valves in there as we could. And uh, I'll tell you about these. Um, the intake valves are an inch 600.
Yeah. They look close to the same size, are they? Or are they a little different intake? The exhaust? exhaust is an inch 700. Oh, okay. So they're, they're pretty close. And we got enough airflow, made pretty decent power. I mean, made over 300 horsepower with a, out of a stock Model A isn't too bad. I mean, Model A, well, it's not stock. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not stock. Yeah. But out of a, a block, a Model A block. And that was naturally aspirated? Yes, this was, well, we got, we have one that's also, we ran turbocharged, but yeah, this one, this one got the records naturally aspirated. And we went to, I don't know what we did at El Mirage, but Bonneville, we went to 214 miles an hour. So 214 naturally aspirated, and then the other record, which is 240, was turbo. Yeah, right? that was with a turbo on it. And that was in the streamliner. But yeah, there's a, a little difference in diameter, but not a lot. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now this head is made in layers, and um, the bottom piece was made so that, because this is so close between the cylinders, so that we could get it down in the hole. And then this center layer is mostly the water. There's a little bit of water up above. And then the the top basically holds the guides and and the surface for the cam carrier. Now, did you make any prototypes out of wood to fit it when you were building it, or did you we just... made one po prototype on this one, and that was more just for the um, for airflow to check out. You know whether or not we could get the airflow numbers we thought we needed to make the kind of power we need. So, this is cool. So I don't know of any cylinder heads that I can think of that are made in layers that come apart, especially. That's pretty cool. Now these, we actually <laughs> already softened the glue so we could get it apart. This is what we use as a high saw glue. See, this is a water jacket in yeah. here. And then this, like I said, this is actually a separate layer. But um, And then this is just to get some of the water down in wow. as far as we can. Now the other advantage of going with this, going down in an inch, was that you get a real nice short side radius, so you get a real, lot better airflow by keeping this radius as big as possible. Absolutely. And so it, it helped helped in the looks of it, but also helped in the making power by increasing the short side radius. And when you did your initial design, is this just done in AutoCAD, or how did you design this? This one here, actually, I <laughs> it was before we had any uh, uh, that good of a system. I actually just used what we using at the time, which was a uh, called power station. You know, now I use um, uh, Bobcat. Bobcat. Because, yeah, it works as good as anything. <laughs> and then what was the, um, how long did this process take? Well, this looks pretty complex. I mean, well, I don't, it, was, it looks complex. But... Like I say, I mean, we, I know we had it running by the next season, so. So about a year to build it? Well, the off season was probably you really only have from November to May. Okay. So, you know, six or seven months. So you made a prototype out of wood and then after you saw no, it? No, I actually made this the prototype out of metal. Oh, out of metal. Um, oh, okay. And that was was just, it was a metal piece. That's actually down in the museum in Lincoln, Nebraska right now. They, um, Pete gave that to them. But that is... Like I say, we did that to check the airflow and and valve sizing and stuff like that just to see if we could get what we thought we needed. And it's actually it's actually a little short on airflow for the amount of cubic inches. Uh huh. This is you know because this is over 200 cubic inches per cylinder, and you know the valve area per square inch uh, or cubic inch is really kind of short, but 
it's all you can do. You know, you have to deal with the block. Yeah. The rules are you have to deal with that block and the four a little bit the four inches is about as big as you can go. Sure. I think we ended up with like four oh sixty or something like that. So is it threaded here on the intake port? What's is this an injector that goes in there or what goes in there? We actually did that in case we were gonna put an injector in there, but we ended up putting it in the manifold. Okay. And then, you know, this surface here, like say we glued together a high saw, the later motor when we turboed it, we actually were blow we had a the wastegate stick and actually blew the epoxy out of this area and into the intake, started leaking water. So wow. the other motor is actually, we used an O-ring on it. And why, um, I noticed before you guys just use water, is there, are you not allowed to use coolants or antifreeze? You're not supposed to use coolant because of its- um, The leaks. Well, the, there's a couple guys that had to, they use the Evans coolant and uh -huh. it caught on fire. Oh. Which, because it's alcohol based. Alcohol based, yeah. Yeah. So. And can we see the valve seat? Yeah. Oh, nice. Wow. It's pretty interesting. So that basically is why you increase this that one inch is to basically take up that additional space. Well, to in the get get, chamber, get right? the shorter read. The rod ratio on. Or shorter uh, rods. A small block Chevy with a six inch rod of the stock stroke is right, right at 1.72 and this is uh, with a with a seven inch rod it's 1.75 yeah whereas with an eight inch it's two to one it's like it's <laughs> so this is a lot closer in line to what a chevy would be that's great so there's your cams that looks like a now these are flat tap it Cams on the newer or the other motor, we actually use what they call Offenhauser buzz um, lifters. They are keyed. They actually have a radius dome. Has he showed you that? Uh, I don't know if I've seen those. That's so cool. Are you are you aware? Are there other production engines out there, motorcycles, aircraft, or anything where the cylinder heads are in segments like this? I've never seen that. So this could be. I don't know if I should say the word the only one because somebody will prove you wrong. But yeah, probably, probably somebody else did something. I I like say I just found a way to get to what I wanted. Where are the other buckets? Uh, buckets are in here. Okay. So these are basically flat, flat lifters. And we ran those at the time, just trying to get as much lift as we could and everything. They're fair size diameter. They're like almost inch and a half in diameter. So these are Offenhauser lifters. See their radius on yeah. top? And then they're keyed so they can't rotate. rotate. And by having a radius, you can go with a more, more aggressive cam. So you get more, you know, duration out of it and lift. So it and so it ramps it's, up. Yeah. This, like I say, this is, idea came from the Offenhauser back in the 50s and 60s. Wow, that's pretty <laughs> so, cool. So, but it, like I say, the radius allows you more aggressive cams. And so we Can put I those see? in the, like I say, they weren't in this motor, but they're in the other Model A we were in. And they're in this three liter that's in the car now. Okay, so the Offenhauser style. So it's just yeah. kind of ramped up. So that little bit right there is just giving you a little more lift, right? Well, is that like what that say, is, it, it allows you to give more duration, a little right. faster acting. If you look at the cam lobe on this, see these are kind of more pointed. Yeah, they're very, very sharp. Yeah, angle. whereas the ones that work on this cam or this lifter is more of a radius. Okay. It's kind of like a blend between a roller lifter and a yeah. flat tap. That's pretty cool. Yeah. No. So they ran those in the 50s. Often yeah. They, and, others. yeah. and like I said, they're, they're not gonna last real long because they don't rotate mm -hmm. or anything. Like but, like that one will sit there and re spin. And But this is you know, stuck in one position. So th these aren't- They'll wear a little good faster. for as many miles, but they're good for but racing. But for racing applications, that's pretty yeah. trick. 
Well, that's pretty cool. And did you determine the, like, did you cut the blanks and stuff for the yeah, cam like you did all, on the other ones? Yeah, you know, we made the blanks and then I, um, on this one, we actually ran the stock um, Model A firing order, which is different than most four cylinders. It's the firing order on this motor is is one two four three, whereas most four cylinders are one three four two. Uh huh. Now, and both the Model A's are that way. Actually, <laughs> they ended up grinding the cams in that the three liter <laughs> the same way. <laughs> I wanted just a regular. Fire oh, standard fire, order. four cylinder fire yeah. order, and they yeah. did it like the Model A. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why I do these like this. <laughs> I rough them out so they're. <laughs> Can we see them? They're stuck with the, the firing order that I get close to. Oh, I got it. Okay. <laughs> so this this way, I, I control the firing order. <laughs> yeah, because if you drop it off and say this is to a Model A, right? They're gonna grind it to a Model A's. Fine yeah. order, but in this case, you kind of de predetermine how you're going to run it. Now, that's for the two liter, and is that a traditional firing order, or are yes. you doing that one? Okay. Well, that's pretty cool, Kevin. So, yeah, this is, you know, again, I know you have a lot more experience than I do, but just exposure myself around cylinder heads, I've never seen one that is in two pieces, or three pieces rather, but even just yeah. two pieces. Well, the other motor is in three pieces, but a different way. I mean, it has. Each one of these that goes down in a cylinder is an individual piece. But then I realized that I didn't need to have, because this was a little bit of a hassle because we couldn't share water. Yeah. So we had to plumb and have big manifolds on it. So we made this like one open chamber for all three of them. And we had to, you know, put a wall for this to seal against, but um, that way the water could share. Yeah. I didn't have to separate or run a line to each cylinder for the water. So they're all each individually sealed. Yeah. And all four of them. So with modern technology, because I know we're familiar, I'm familiar with it with our schools. If you were doing this again, because I know you did this many years ago, would you 3D print these ahead of time? Or would you just well, kind of go no, right into I, what I, you're, or is that not your I mean, game? I, I don't know whether or not you can get it'd be nice if, if the water could be printed that well i mean the the, the they could seal that well uh -huh. it would be nice a, a good way to go um i i kind of like what i'm doing on my boat motor whereas we 3d printed the, the wax and then have it investment cast so i think that's yeah. a better way of doing it um but this is yeah how many years ago did you do this Oh, this would have been 2008, I think. Okay. Eight so or nine. A while ago. Yeah. A few years ago. A couple weeks ago. Pretty cool. I But the other thing is the way I, the later motor you did, like the three liter, I did it more of a shoe box where all the bottom pieces up to just the top plate where the the cams bolt on is is one, you know, one piece. All the water jacket comes down from the top. And then the plate just seals off the top. That way, I don't have to worry about seams in the ports leaking yeah. and stuff like that. The big 12 uh, is done that way in the three liter. So. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, I'm going to roll. Yeah. So these are the NASCAR valves six millimeter stem, two inch, I think it's a 180, two inch 180 head. And these are what they're running now. I don't know if they're running now, but what they were running. And if you, these are down to six millimeter valve stems. They're tiny. These are all NASCAR. They're titanium um, keepers. They're actually steel retainers, but they're really light. And then you put that in there, and you can't turn it. <laughs> and it locks like it's on just there. locked, huh? Wow, look at that. And this is the style valve and setup you're running in the, um, you're going to run the, in the V12. The V12 is, has the this, the two liter is going to have it, the um, four liter upstairs, the five liter upstairs. It's, so this is, and then these are the used components you're getting from NASCAR, you're saying? Yes. So, 
and you get everything here is used. A retainer has been used, but you can't even see anywhere on that. The valve, I mean, what gets me is you get these boxes, and uh, this tells you it had 693 miles on it. Homestead. So that's Homestead and track? 12, or? 12, 19, of 18, 2018. Yeah, that's where they're. The so you are. really don't know what driver this is. You just know it came out yeah. of that motor. What did it say? Motor. Yeah. Yes. Number one. Yeah, one zero four five. That could be Jimmy Johnson's, right? Who you knows? just don't know. Do you think there. the stuff's cleaned after the full time? I mean, look at that. Well, the, there's just some that look better than that. Look at the etching. You can see the the lettering yeah. on no, that. There's there's one set here that really looks like I can't even tell they ran. But it's just so this. dinky. This, this has, is used. Wow. I mean, it does not look like it's run. But it Those has, things, whatever fuel they're running, it doesn't it build has, any type of carbon. That's, yeah, engine 711 track. What does it uh, say? Yeah, I mean, it says more miles. They must have cleaned it or something because that's 1,406 miles. JD. I mean, you can tell it ran, but it doesn't look like they like, must have used some kind of vapor, something to. to you think they're cleaning clean them? It or something? Why? Yeah, I mean, it would be interesting to know why they would clean it though. If they're just gonna. I could say some are clean, some aren't. I, I just. Or is it simply they clean them and then they inspect them for wear, just to, and then they. Yeah. I don't do you, do you under? I don't know the whole principle know. behind it, but is that a common standard practice then in NASCAR? Are you? I believe it is because they're, you know, they have so much in sponsorship money that they can't risk a valve failure. So this is so just they, one race. That's it. Yeah, they just take everything's it out. redone. Yeah. Look at that. This is from 2018. That's a. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that's really cool. And you guys said these are like, what, <coughs> penny pennies on the dollar, right? I think I paid. Um, I believe these were like, uh, some of them are more, but I think these were like um, $29 for a set of eight. That's cheaper eight than you can get them on Summit Magazine, how to sell Well, you can't buy, <laughs> you can't buy one valve for, I mean, each one of those things, I mean, if, if I you go to Dell West to buy a valve like that, it's at least 160 bucks. Is this a common size? You said it's like two and an eighth or something? Well, no, I think it's 2180. 2180. I mean, is that a common size for any type of street engine or stuff that folks uh, are doing? Old, or old Chevys were 202s, so and it's a little bigger. But they they would, you know, this is like 180, 176. But is this? Are you able to? Buy a cylinder head, or is there a cylinder head with, that can accept this size I'm valve? I'm sure there are. I, I, <laughs> but you're buying them used, but most folks. Yeah, we're we're changing. We're but you're cutting them down, turning yeah. them down, right? Yeah, we have to, um, you know, put the right size guides in for them because, um, well, these the, the four cylinder already had the right size valve. But you're machining the face of this valve, this the material head here, diameter down, yeah. down, and then you're. Recutting it. We're cutting angle. At the angle. Now these, if you look at them, I think these were super steep. Some of these, I think, are like as high as 60 degree angle on the face. You know, normal car is 45. Yeah. And then I know a lot of them went to 50, then 55, and I like to say these, I think, are 60. And you've cut the stem in half before too. Were they? Wasn't one of them hollow? Yeah, yeah we've cut some before. Were they hollow or solid? The um, the ones we used in the model, the model or not the model, the flathead, were hollow. Yeah. And I know back. But they were they were bigger. They were um, they were seven millimeter. Well, that's it, folks. Thank you for watching, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this unique behind the scenes opportunity to see Kevin and Pete tear down this wonderful engine design that has set a world record. And uh, stay tuned for some more unique and fun videos coming up.